Next, we have a treat. Uh, Chris McCarran uh, is well known today, as, uh, has, had, has established that wonderful riding school that we all know him as a Hall of Fame jockey, won a couple of Kentucky Derbies, and uh, just a great, uh, great ambassador for racing. And he's really achieved a lot with his riding school, and uh, he's going to talk to us about, uh, about using the crop. Chris? I always wanted a soapbox. Now I got one. I've been vertically challenged my whole life, so this does not embarrass me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, thanks uh, to all the sponsors of this event, and I'm very, very proud and pleased to be able to stand up before you and share my insights and hopefully um, teach a little something today. I've never used one of these, so I'm going to try. This way? Oh, right here? That's me. All right, uh, I discussed this particular topic with Dr. Peterson up at Saratoga this past summer. And I shared with him it's, that it's not only important to look at the materials that are being used by the riders riding today, but the proper use of it is crucial. And I think I'm fair in saying I consider myself an expert in this field, not because I rode 34,000 races, but because I was fined 12 times in my career for misuse of the whip. That's a stat that I'm not very proud of. And I was fined to the tune of $3,400 over 28 years, and it's quite embarrassing. My idea about the use of the whip, the crop, changed a great deal when Trevor Denman started announcing races at Santa Anita. When he would make this glowing, exaggerating, uh, praise, if you will, which I thought at the time that's what it was, but it turned out to be incredibly accurate, out of a polished, beautiful hand ride by Lafitte Pincai, by Eddie Delahousie, by Bill Schumacher, by Gary Stevens, I started trying to change my style a little bit so I could get some of those compliments too. But invariably, I'd get beat a nose. And I'd say, no, I can't do that. I gotta, I gotta make sure I get everything I can out of my horse. My, I thought my job was to make the horses run. As I got older and a little bit more polished, a little bit more understanding, I realized my job is to coax the horses to run, not force them into it, not beat the crap out of them, but ask them to run and coax them to run. The main thing about using the crop on a horse is in which part of the stride are you striking the horse and where are you striking the horse? You certainly should give the horse a chance to respond to the first time that you, what we call, flag. Shake the stick, throw it up by the horse's head, give the horse an opportunity to recognize what you're asking and a, an opportunity to respond as well. If the flagging doesn't work, you don't get enough response, tap the horse on the shoulder. If that doesn't work, sometimes you reach back and hit the horse, what we call backhanded, which is not cocking the stick, hitting the horse with your uh, backhanded style. When the horse is in fully extended part of the stride, and that head is down, the flank area is fully exposed. And the flank area is typically where the horses take the most punishment. That's where the horses are most uh, affected by the sting and the, the uh, contact from the crop. What I'm trying to teach my students at NARA is to use the crop in the right way so that we're not going to leave welts. We're not going to be cutting horses' tissue. It is a very ugly sight to be called into the steward's office the morning after you've hit a horse in the wrong place and hit a horse too often and see the photographs that the state vet would have taken and shared with me, it just, ah, it made my skin crawl. So I am very, very pleased and honored that I would be invited here today to be able to share my insights as to how that can be prevented. So what I'm trying to teach my students, and if we go and watch any of the films of the graduates that are out there riding now, 
Uh, I wish I came more prepared because one of our graduates, um, Andrew Wolfson, won a race at Penn National uh, a few nights ago, and his ride would have been a perfect example, a pr great demonstration for me to show exactly what I'm talking about to do it the right way. We've got some video here to show you about the wrong way. So can we roll that video, please? All right, we're going to pay attention to this rider right here and this rider right here. When you notice the rider on this horse, every time his, his stick makes contact with the horse's hip, the head is up in the air. Conversely, every time this rider makes contact, the horse's head is down, and this whole area here, this flank area, is exposed. Now, I asked a good friend of mine last night, who's been a veterinarian for I don't know how many decades, but a long time, if he's ever seen a horse that was actually cut from a stick up on the hip, and the answer was no. When you hit a horse in the flank area or under the, under the belly, behind the girth, you will almost certainly leave at least a welt. And sometimes it's even more than that. Sometimes it's that, uh, that very thin, soft tissue that is right in front of the stifle as a horse's hind leg is extended out. When that's exposed, that can be very easily damaged. So there's two different examples here. This rider here is, is using what I believe, using the crop properly. And this rider is out of stride, out of sync, out of rhythm with the horse's stride in order to be able to apply the crop in the right place at the right time. The next thing we're going to show is the, uh, the head-on of the same race. And if you pay attention to the horse with the shadow roll on right here, when this stick makes contact with the horse's hip, the head is up in the air, and the stifle is forward, where that, that soft, flank, soft tissue flank area is protected by the stifle going forward. It's once you, when you begin an athletic endeavor, no matter what sport we're talking about, if you go at a certain way for a long time, it's difficult to change that style. It's not impossible, but it's difficult. This is an, an example of overuse. The rider on the rail Strikes, strikes this horse about 30 times from the 316th pole to the wire. Once he drew the saber, he never put it away. He's either hitting the horse on the shoulder or I'm not exactly sure where the, where the stick is making contact on this horse, but there's no question that this is, in my mind, overuse of the stick. I don't have the... Uh, I don't even know what race this is. I know what track it is. I don't know what the, who the riders are. And I'm not sure what the chart would have said with regard to this particular race or this ride. So it, start, it needs to start with education. Not just the riders who are out there riding, but also the officials. The stewards and the junior officials need to understand how a horse should be ridden, especially when it comes to using the crop. If the stewards and the junior officials, those officials in the racing office whose responsibility it is to go over the films from the previous day's races and report to the stewards any findings that they may discover that were not within the rules and report those findings to the stewards. I think it's very important for all the officials to learn 
the, the proper use. I am not an advocate at all of banning the stick, taking it away. I'm not an advocate for limiting the number of strikes. I'm an advocate for educating people with regard to the proper use of the stick. The reason I'm not an advocate of banning it or limiting strikes is because I rode a lot of horses in my career that had a tendency to pull themselves up when they made the lead. So if I'm on a very well-bred colt who has broken his maiden, gone through his conditions, and now is in a stake race, which could cause him to, cause his value to increase greatly, and who has a habit of pulling himself up when he makes the lead like Ali Sheba used to do, if I don't have the opportunity to encourage him with the stick, if my hands are tied, then we're compromising the opportunities for that owner, the trainer, and, and the betting public. Let's see. I think that about wraps it up. Thank you for the opportunity, I appreciate it, and I hope I've enlightened some of you. Thanks. Uh, okay. Okay, the question is how would I how how would we regulate how the crop is being used, the number of strikes, and where the horse is being struck. Uh, excellent question. I think it could, to, the simple answer and the simple way to go about that would be house rules. Um, you don't have to pass any kind of legislation or the, no, no statutes have to be put in place and, and no rules have to be adopted other than by the board of stewards at the particular tracks. I will say this, there are certain, certain areas of the country where this particular type of, of uh, misuse of the crop is more prevalent than others. And I think it would be incumbent upon those officials, those senior officials at the tracks, to do as much as they can to curb the misuse of, of the stick. Does that answer your question? Any others? All right, thanks.